Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about the Dell PowerEdge R320 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on solid state drives. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R320 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, top in, uh, this video will be specifically focused on solid state drives for your R320 server. So here's what we're gonna do in this video as a whole. We're gonna go over the different types of compatible solid state drives for your 320 or your 420. We're gonna show you the max speeds, the max sizes. We're gonna physically install one, which is really easy since it's a hot swap system. And then we're gonna show you two tools that we like called Dell Diagnostics and HD Sentinel. Now with HD Sentinel, what we do is we actually plug in a storage array so we can test drive standalone before we ever put them into a live production environment. And the nice thing about uh, HD Sentinel is it'll tell you the power on hours and the health score. Um, and so again, it's just a nice secondary tool uh, outside of Dell Diagnostics. Even though I love Dell Diagnostics, they've made it a very simple tool. You can test and update your whole system with uh, tools that Dell has in there, and Dell Diagnostics is one of my favorite tools as a whole. So, all right, well, let's hop into the different compatible types. So you have SAS and you have SATA. There's some advantages to both. With SAS, you're gonna get a higher speed overall. You can get six gigabit per second, whereas with SATA, you can get three gigabit per second. So depending on what you're looking for, if you need a faster speed overall, uh, SAS will be the way to go. Now it's going to cost you more and that's the advantage of SATA is it costs less compared to SATA as a whole on a price per gigabyte or price per terabyte. SATA is the better deal overall so it again just depends on what your application is and what you're looking for. Now on the size or capacity side they're the exact same as far as the max you can get 7.68 terabytes which when you think about it is a pretty great storage overall. Uh, now if you are uh, working with a small form factor system that's actually a huge advantage because the max that you can get on small form factor for a hard drive is 2.4 terabytes with a SAS drive so you can not only get a better uh, performing drive with a solid state drive over a hard drive you can actually get higher storage for the small form factor chassis now with the large form factor chassis that's the big advantage is you can shove in just really cheap uh, drives that are you know way higher terabytes or 16 terabytes or 18 terabytes stuff like that and it'll be much cheaper um, than it will be for a solid state drive but again the performance is just so so much better for a solid state drive and if you're working on a 12th gen server one of the things that people ask us all the time is like hey how can I you know extend the life of this a few years I don't want to go drop ten thousand dollars twenty thousand dollars on a brand new server so we always say upgrade your SSDs and upgrade your RAM those are going to be the best band-aid to keep your server running for a few more years and just boost the performance overall. So all right, now that we know a little bit more about the speeds, the sizes, the compatibilities, let's show you how to actually install one. All right, so now I have my ESD gear on. We're safe to uh, work on the machine. So uh, depending on what R320 you have, uh, you might have the four bay large form factor or you may have the eight bay small form factor. So we have on our website both options if you need the 2.5 inch solution or if you need the 3.5 inch solution. I will note with the 3.5 inch solution, you will need to have a 3.5 inch tray with the adapter or the converter to be able to put in a 2.5 inch drive because your SSDs will realistically are gonna be 2.5 inch. So, all right, let's show you how easy this upgrade is. Because it's a hot swap machine, you simply just push the red circle, your tray is gonna pop open and you're just gonna pull your old drive out. And now we're gonna go ahead and install our SSD and literally you're just gonna pop the, the tray open and slide it in. Uh, when you get all the way in, you'll be able to just close it. It's a very, very simple upgrade. One of the easiest upgrades you can do to your machine as a whole and one of the best ones as far as boosting your overall performance. So if you're looking for any SSDs, uh, we'll have a ton of different options on our site as we just uh, noted a few seconds ago. All right, so now we're gonna show you guys how to use a Dell Diagnostics to actually test your SSD. Hey guys, it's Ben with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you how to test your hard drives with Dell Diagnostics. And technically, it's going to cover more than just hard drives. It'll test your whole system and other components such as your CPUs, your memory, your NIC, the fans, video cards, and much, much more. But like I said, you can also test your hard drives with this, and it's actually a pretty good way to test them, um, and it's a great way to see if there's issues with those drives. So let's go ahead and get started. So what you want to go ahead and do is boot up your server and during post you want to go ahead and press F10 so you can enter the lifecycle controller. Once you're in the lifecycle controller you want to navigate to the hardware diagnostics tab on the left side and then you want to press run hardware diagnostics. 
and you may get a little warning screen, but you just want to go ahead and press yes. And it'll take a little bit of a second to load, but this will load us into Dell Diagnostics. So immediately whenever we load into Dell Diagnostics, there's a lot of information that pops up. As you can see on the left hand side of the screen, it shows everything that's gonna be tested. On the right hand side of the screen, there's lots of information about the test itself. Um, you can also navigate to the results and different configurations and also the event log. One thing I do want to mention about Dell Diagnostics is that some of you out there, when trying to run the hardware diagnostics, you may get an issue, or you may get a warning about the firmware not being supported or the onboard diagnostics not being supported. And in that case, you want to go ahead and you can either do this in Lifecycle Controller itself or you can do it in iDRAC, but you just want to go ahead and update that firmware. And we actually have a video later on in the series that covers mass updates. And one of the things that's in those updates is the onboard diagnostics firmware. So stay tuned for that, and that'll give you all that information you need. And like I said, you can also do this through iDRAC as well. So other than that, there's not really much to say about these tests. You just kind of let it run, and this can this can take a while. It can take, you know, maybe a low end of 20 minutes up to maybe even an hour, especially if you have more memory in your system. Um, it's going to take a while to test all of that. Um, the more drives you have, that might add some time to it. So it really just depends on your system's configuration. But we're going to go ahead and fast forward through this. Like I said, pretty straightforward. Um, if it has any issues, it'll show you that that test failed. Uh, but if it has a check next to the test, like it does on the left-hand side for all of our items here, then that means the test was successful and there's no need to worry about it. So like I said, we're just going to go ahead and fast forward. All right, so we have finally reached the end of our test. And at the end of the test, we can go to the results tab that's in the middle of the screen, and we can go ahead and scroll through all the different messages. You can also view the event log, so that's pretty helpful. But if you go to the results, you can see a more in-depth information about the test that you just ran. So there's something very specific. It's a great place to look. But overall, that's Dell Diagnostics. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's easy to access. Like I said, you may have that one issue where you may have to update the onboard diagnostics firmware. Uh, but other than that, once you do that, you shouldn't have any issues. All you got to do is navigate to the hardware diagnostics and just let the test run. You can let these run and then just go off, do something else and come back 10, 20 minutes later. Um, and it's a pretty easy way to one, test all of the drives in your system and make sure they're properly functioning, but it's also a great way to test all of the other components in your system. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys HD Sentinel. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now, and as you can see, we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has been in use. You don't want to be using drives that have been you know, heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure. Um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool but as you can see we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software and like I said lots of information it'll give you health scores of the drives as you can see the two we have up top they have a hundred percent health score while the one at the bottom has a 99 percent so all pretty good so I hope you guys found this video useful, and if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe, and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom-built server, or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock, so you can go reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by.